In this video, we're going to be building a mixing template. It's going to save you time and it helps you focus and spend less time searching for effects and things like that in your mix. So there's a few things we're gonna cover. We're gonna start by adding in tracks that will become folders. These will just be named like drums, bass, guitar. And as we import media, these will become folders. Then we're going to add in some starting point effects. So it's like um, the drum bus compression. We can put in one or two plugins that we know will work. And then we don't need to search for those um, when we're actually mixing. We can put them in with some rough settings and then tweak as we hear the content of that mix. My last mixing template didn't have parallel compression built in, and then I never tended to add it in on my own. So I'm gonna start off uh, my new template using parallel compression in there. Um, I think that's gonna save me time and, and it's going to be a, a technique that I reach for more frequently. We're also gonna be putting in some other parallel effects. So setting up like a lo-fi distortion track, um, setting up modulation effects, because I don't tend to use them a lot uh, if I don't have them available already. And then delays and reverbs. And then my last mixing template didn't have any uh, master track effects, and I always tend to um, start adding those effects a bit too late in my mix. And so I wanna start off with better settings from the beginning. Um, we can always start with them bypassed if you prefer, but just a little bit of EQ, a bit of compression, and tape saturation, and I might even put ozone on there, but just disabled. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, and we're gonna be talking about them a little bit later. Uh, so let's just jump into this and start uh, building your template. All right, so let's start off with making some tracks. So I'm thinking drums, bass guitar, electric guitars, acoustic guitars, keyboards, samples, vocals, and background vocals. So we're gonna put in eight tracks. Insert multiple tracks, eight, and yeah, drop those in. We're gonna start labeling them, drums, pressing tab to go to the next track, bass guitar, electric guitars, acoustic guitars, and keyboards, samples, vocals, background vocals. Yeah, you could also call that BG vocals. As I was labeling each of these tracks, they got colors automatically. That's from the extensions menu, the auto color icon. And in here, I just have um, some preset things. So if I call the track drum, it's going to get this color. Um, I've got some other functions that require the word bus to be in the name, so I'm just gonna remember to do that. Something that I need. I'm actually gonna call this BG box. It's actually not a bus. This one is going to be a folder inside of the vocal bus. So that's gonna be like that, and everything else I can kind of leave as it is. Let's switch over to the mixer view and start adding in some effects. So I know that on my drum bus, I tend to use one or two different compressors, and that tends to be the T-Rex 5 bus compressor. It's a really good bus compressor, the SSL style, but this one has a few other modes, like a 1.5 to one ratio. It has the side chain filter, plus it has mid side mode, so really great options with that one. And I also have the BX Townhouse bus compressor. Again, an SSL style, but this is kind of like a, a custom handmade one, something like that, or a model of that. And both of these, I've got a starting point set up already. Um, th they sound similar, but on different days, one works better than the other. And just having them both available is going to save me time. So I don't ever need to look in the effects browser for those two plugins because they're already on my drum bus. Um, next, I'm going to go to my EQ section, and I'm going to add in the Soundtoys CQ or PsyQ. Not sure what it's called, but I'm just going to add in a bit of gain um, on the drive, a bit of the highs, and maybe just a touch of the lows, like, I don't know, 2 dB or so, 
And I'll just have that as a starting point. So that's there. Anytime I play anything through that drum bus, it's going to have that effect. And for me, that's kind of where I go with that plugin anyways. So with the bass, I'm frequently using a 1176 style compressor along with an LA-2A style compressor. So I'm just going to take the white 2A from IK Multimedia, as well as the, where's the other one? The Black 76. I don't have a starting point preset save with that one, but I do have it for the uh, the white 2A. So um, I'll put those on there, just bypass them, and uh, those won't be active until I need them. Now, I might just put on the an re-EQ on there as well. So the bass has an EQ on it, but it's not being used yet. Uh, for electric guitars, I'm often using the white 2A. Um, I'll probably put the peak reduction all the way down on this as a starting point. I like a really, really gentle um, amount of gain reduction on that, just basically so that the meter starts moving and kind of, you know, that's that's how I like to do it. So same with the acoustic guitars. And you know, honestly, the, the keyboard bus could probably use that as well. With the vocal bus, it'd be good to start off with a de -esser. You always need one anyways. So I'll just put um, I'll put the Tone Boosters de on there. That's kind of my go-to for that. And I'll put it again on the background vocal bus. And you know, this starting point tends to work pretty well for me. Lots of other great de out there, but that's one that I reach for most often. I'm going to put on a TDR Nova on the uh, vocal bus, just so I have a, an, a little bit of a nicer EQ on there. And I'll just use a re-EQ on the background vocal bus. Something I'm frequently adding sort of towards the middle to end of a mix is tape saturation. And so I may as well just put that into my template so it's there already, and I don't have to go and look for it later on. So the Tone Boosters Real Bus V3, this is just going to go on every track. I, again, have a starting point saved, kind of a, a natural sound, not too aggressive. And so that's just going to go on every track like that. Actually, maybe, maybe not on the background vocals bus, um, but yeah, everywhere else. So now let's set up some more effect tracks. So I'm just going to add in another track, and I'll call this uh, Drum Crush. And so that's going to be beside the drum bus. And I'm actually going to make that go inside the drum bus folder. Don't worry about this, uh, this track getting bigger like that. That's just a layout. And that's, again, something that's set up in the auto color icon. So if it's a folder, it gets this sidebar layout. So on the Drum Crush track, pretty frequently I'm using the Sound Toys uh, Devil Lock Deluxe. It's a pretty aggressive compressor. It sounds pretty nasty. Um, so I'll, I'll just set it something like this. And I will also put on an EQ, and I'll just put that in front of it. And I'll probably do something like this. Um, and then turn it down quite a bit. So yeah, I'll actually turn it down all the way because that's something that I want to blend in to taste. So since you're watching this video, you probably want to learn something and learning is really important to me. I actually schedule it on my calendar every day to learn something new. That could be through a book or through a podcast or through Skillshare. Uh, Skillshare is such a focused platform for learning that uh, it doesn't feel like I'm procrastinating or anything like that. I don't feel distracted. I don't feel guilty at all for spending an hour on Skillshare uh, learning because the classes are so good and I can almost always apply what I learned there into my business, my life. Skillshare is an online learning platform with over 29,000 classes on art, design, productivity, music, filmmaking, pretty much everything. I've used Skillshare to improve my video production skills, my lighting skills, my camera skills, my presenting to camera skills have improved a lot since I started using Skillshare. If you want to try out Skillshare, you can get two months for free using the link down below. And after that, if you want to continue your membership, it's really affordable. It's only about $10 a month. 
Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, supporting creators on YouTube, as well as their own platform. Now back to the video. Now let's add in some parallel effects like reverbs and delays and things. I'm gonna go to the last track here and insert multiple tracks. Let's do another eight, I guess, at end of project. And so these will be chorus, we'll do a flanger, we'll do a short delay, uh, long delay, lo-fi, we'll do a reverb one, reverb two, and reverb three. So on the chorus track, I have a lot of options for that. Um, I'm just going to go to my modulation folder, and the Tal Chorus LX is a great one. Just want to make sure that that's on 100% uh, wet. Usually the volume on increase on this is a bit much, so uh, turn that down, and yeah, I like those settings. I'll just bypass that and then put on another chorus. Yeah, the basic air chorus is pretty good as well. And I'll just choose something like a heavy slow chorus. Make sure that the mix is going to be all the way up because this is going to be a parallel effect. We're sending from the individual tracks into this, which then goes to the master. For flanger, uh, we'll do the air flanger. You know, maybe on the chorus, I will actually do another micro shift because micro shift is a plugin that I do use quite a lot. And so that's kind of my default for a sort of a chorus effect. For short delay, let's use something pretty simple. The Valhalla Freak Echo, set this to a 16th note, mix all the way up, and maybe a little less feedback. So it's just something like that. Echo Boy Jr. as another option for the short delay. I'm gonna put on the Memory Man one, and again, 16th note and maybe a little bit high and low cut on this. We'll come back and tweak these settings, of course. Uh, for the long delay, maybe I'll use Primal Tap. This is one that I don't tend to use in my templates. It's a really great plugin, and yeah, just for whatever reason, it didn't get into my template last time, so it didn't end up getting used for years. So it's time to give that one another shot. Yeah, for lo-fi effect, let's do a... Air lo-fi is a good one. We'll just set the dip, bit depth to like, I don't know, 9-bit and sample rate down a little bit. Let's put in another thing like Futzbox. Futzbox is a great plugin for that sort of sound, lo-fi sounds. Um, here, Muffbox. I don't know what that sounds like, but that's going to be the starting point. For reverbs, I'm a huge fan of the Valhalla plugins, so I'll do Valhalla Plate on the first one, Valhalla Room on the second one, and Vintage Verb on the, the third one, just to have those options. As well, each of these tracks needs an EQ. Got a shortcut to bring in an EQ, and there we go. Now, the master track, let's put in some plugins that I tend to use the EQ P1A is a good one from T Rex. It's a pull tech style. So let's just do a little bit of a boost. Um, sure, at 30. And we'll do the boost at, let's say, boost at 10K. Just really gentle sort of boost. Um, not doing a lot, but just a little bit of tone shaping from the start. Back to compressors, I tend to use the. Again, the bus compressor, so I'll put that on there and just bypass it. Got a new one that I haven't used much, the Dynamu. And so that's one that I want to try out on Master Bus. So I'm going to put that one there. And then I'm going to put on Isotope Ozone, uh, the full version. I'll put that on, and but um, actually disable it. Uh, so I'm just going to right-click and toggle offline. So it's there if I need it, but it's not going to use any CPU. So there we go. That's um, that's kind of a, a basic template. 
Um, you will want to use your favorite presets and starting points on these tracks. Um, but once you've got this all set up, you can select all the tracks and right click, save tracks as template. And let's just call this um, mix template one. And on the master track, we might want to save this as an effects chain, which means we have to open up this plugin window, right click, effects chains, save all effects as chain. And we'll put this into the mix bus folder. And we'll call this, uh, I guess I've got a mix bus A there already. So I'll, I'll call this mix bus to B. And so next time we start a project, I'll just hit new on this. Next time we start a project is really simple. Right click, insert track from template, and mix template one. It's going to take a a few seconds to actually get started, but pretty good actually. That didn't take very long at all. All those plugins are there. Everything is as I left it. And on the master track, I can go to the effects chains and mix bus, mix bus B. And there are my mix bus effects. So that's where we're gonna leave this video for today. This template isn't finished, but it's gonna be something that's going to take a little bit more time. I'm going to um, use it in a mix and see what other things I can add in. After a couple mixes, I will save these changes and have something that's going to save me a lot of time. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. Thank you.